All right, let's have a quick conversation about interval notation um, and inequalities in sets of numbers. So at the very top here, uh, we have a number line that describes all the numbers between negative 2 and 3, um, including 3, actually. So negative 2 we call our lower bound, 3 we call our upper bound, um, and 3, which is the upper bound there, is included in the set. If we want to represent this as an inequality, uh, what we'd write is negative 2 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. In this case, when we write an inequality, the x just represents a number um, in this set. So a number x here um, is both greater than negative 2 and less than or equal to 3. Again, the equal sign under uh, next to the 3 or the inequality sign next to the 3 um, is related to the bracket on the 3, and then the soft parentheses um, on the 2 on the number line is related to um, the lack of an equal sign on that inequality. In interval notation, uh, we write the same thing. When we write interval notation, we just write the lower bound. In this case, it's 2, negative 2. The upper bound is 3. And then we use the brackets and the parentheses to represent whether these are included in the set. 3 is included in the set, so we use a bracket. And negative 2 is not included in the set, and so we use a parentheses. Okay, those seem to make the most sense. Um, there are examples of sets that don't have a bound. So in this next set, this is all the numbers bigger than 5. Um, the inequality version of that would just be x is greater than 5. You'll notice in this case there aren't two numbers, there's only one number. There's just this lower bound, the smallest number. To write the interval notation of this, what we do is we write 5. 5 is the smallest possible number in the set. Um, but there is no limit to the upper bound, and so we just use this infinity symbol to represent there's nothing to put there. Again, this is really important. Check out the roll of the 3 here is the largest possible number. But in our case, in the second example, there is no number that stops you from going higher. And so we use that's when we use the infinity symbol. Um, and then uh, up here, the 5 has a parentheses around it. It's not included, so we represent that with the parentheses also. All right, so uh, this is another set very similar to that last one. Um, these are all of the numbers less than or equal to x. So in this case, our inequality looks like this. Again, the equal to sign down here um, is the same as this bracket. It just tells you whether this end point is included or not included in the set. If we're going to write the interval notation for this, um, what we do is 7 would be the upper bound, but in this case we have no lowest point. It goes on forever in the negative direction, and that's when we use this negative infinity. The negative infinity represents the fact that there is no lowest point or no lower bound. Um, again, you're using infinities. If you look at these last two examples real quick, you use infinities when there's not there's a lack of either an upper or a lower bound. Right? So in the first example, we didn't have an infinity because we had a negative 2 and a 3, these beginning and ending points. The infinities become involved when we don't have a beginning and an ending point. Um, to finish off this example right here, uh, I've got to put parentheses around the infinity symbols always, and I'll put a bracket around the 7 uh, because 7 is included in the set uh, given this equal sign right here and given the bracket right here. Again, those all relate to each other. Finally, um, when dealing with absolute value inequalities especially, we get disjoint sets. What this is, in this case, uh, in the bottom example here, these are all the numbers less than negative 2, uh, but then also all the numbers bigger than 2. Since these are disjoint, we can't write these in one concise notation, um, but we just describe both of the intervals separately. And so this one here, um, actually maybe I'll do the um, inequality version of these. This one is x is less than or equal to negative 2, um, or x is greater than or equal to 2. And again, these are two separate sets. They can't be combined into one. The interval notation for this would be uh, following the rules above, negative infinity to negative 2, including negative 2. You can't include infinity. And over here, we have 2 to infinity, and again, the bracket around the 2 because of the bracket above. 
the last step is in mathematics, we, even though these are two separate intervals, we want to join them together. Mathematically, we use a symbol as the union symbol, and it looks like this. It's kind of a horseshoe shape. It's kind of a U, but without a kickstand. Um, and that is just a way of saying that's a concise solution set. Um, again, these are two separate intervals, but that symbol just joins them together mathematically. If you're interested, uh, you could read up on intersections and unions of sets uh, that might help you understand the use of this symbol more, but really in practical purposes, whenever you have disjoint sets, again, disjoint sets above are two sets on a number line that are not connected in any way. Um, when you have that situation, you use this U symbol to connect them, to make them one set in essence.